Okay, I've got this the first S. I'm almost done with that on the lower type. I'm just going to give myself a little bit more space around it for the second S and kind of square it off a little. There we go. I can lock it. I accidentally drew a, a new path. I can just get rid of that. And now the next S. Move it into place. Now I'm wanting every letter to feel individual. So I'm kind of starting from scratch with each one. But I could just take that, that S I just did and I could copy it, paste it in place, shrink it, and move it into this place. And that's if I wanted a more uniform look. So we all find our own way. Now this process of using the pencil tool, even though I'm being intentionally wavy, um, is exactly how type designers work. And what's great is you can set the pencil tool to be smoother, right? But you're always, you're kind of um, painting out the edge and then pushing it back. And even before there were vector design programs to make type, because all all type is a vector when it's when it's used on a computer. You would use just illustration board and what are called graphic inks, graphic white and graphic black inks, which are just super opaque. And you would paint your letters just as cleanly as you can, pushing the edge back and forth with black and white paint. And I got to do this in illustration school because I'm I'm old enough for that. <laughs> and then you take it to a photo step machine and they get you just like the clean shape that can then be used in layouts for things like posters and for for printing to make the film work. So the vector is a much easier process than that. But it's based on the exact same principles. So as we are refining this poster, we're also going to learn a little bit about traditional printing and four color offset lithography printing and how to make uh, not just our artwork print ready for our for our photo printers like we did at the midterm but also how to make it press ready if we were going to use a professional press and that's going to have to do with separating it into cmyk dots and kind of controlling those parts of the process and that's an aspect of, of digital art that is unique to the other kind of fine art disciplines. And in graphic design, that's an aspect called print communications. But just like understanding how to design your own type, it's very important to understand that in the digital age of image making. All right, it's moving pretty nicely now. I believe if you make the right decisions with your 
your first and last letters, the rest kind of fall into place. And now that I've worked with this type for a while, I'm more confident with kind of the liberties I can take. I think that's too far. Let's see. And as tempting as it is, notice I'm not like all of a sudden deciding I want to do like a drip on each letter or, you know, really overdo it. Remember that the type is not your illustration. It's not your focal point. It's what's supporting your focal point. Remember that this uh, typeface that I that I got, it only came in uppercase because uppercase uh, often separates for you the spacing and the kerning, so that's not a bad thing. But that doesn't mean I can't create my own, right? And all of the typefaces, or it seems like most of the typefaces on the font are not public domain. They all um, ask for attribution the ones I've seen. So you're under the same kind of obligations if you're not going to give them attribution, say, with type designed by so-and-so. And if you want to sell the work, then it makes sense to hold it to the same standards that we've learned to uphold our compositing work. So you try to transform the type into something that's not particularly recognizable. It's fully your own. That is a worthwhile goal as you're customizing. Remember, as students, you can use other people's work to build your, your skills, but then when it comes to selling yourself with your portfolio, you want to make sure that you're not passing off other people's work as your own. Now with most digital processes, as you get used to them, like if it's animating and copying layers or, or photo editing, you can just start moving your hands faster and get it done. Illustrator isn't really like that because <laughs> you have to be so precise with where you click and how that it's just better to do it, do it right, even though it feels like it takes forever. I sympathize if you're feeling that. So here's a good opportunity. I can kind of assert a little bit of a serif on the inside of the A here. It's so much wider at its base.
and with the T. Yeah, I'm going to try to have some fun just with shearing it. It's like a telesizing. Before I redraw it. T's and A's are tricky letters. When they're next to each other, they kind of work because the T's top heavy and the, the A is bottom heavy. Don't forget the basics of free transform that you have with the large selection tool. Now in my illustration program, when I did letter, letter form design and had to like hand paint my type, it was one of those classes where you just got the teacher to kind of sit down and help you and then you distracted the teacher so they just keep working on your piece because they were very picky. And so if you love type design, you probably have a little bit of that instinct in you, <laughs> you know, just really liking to be kind of nitpicky. And every, t every like portion of the type design, the swell, the curves, the insteps, they all have like certain names. So it's, it's kind of the, uh, the nerd, nerdiest part, I think, of the graphic design world with its own vocabulary. And I'm certainly glad that there are people out there that just love type design. We can benefit from their labor. In a previous video, video I told you about the the history of lowercase, the Carolingian minuscule from the Middle Ages in Latin and in Old English. But there's nothing that says you need to stick to only uppercase or only lowercase letter forms in your type design. Your type is a graphic image as much as it is communicating with text. So I have no problem leaving that, even though all my other eyes have been lowercase. And the thing that makes type look the most kind of digitally set is when it's perfectly horizontal and vertical, which you often want. But what makes kind of sign painting and hand lettering interesting is all the letters are just slightly tilting one way or the other. So that's a powerful little modification you can make, which doesn't take long. 